Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. Now we use SD cards and micro SD cards all the time. You find them in cameras, in phones, in tablets, in handheld gaming consoles, in laptops. Uh, you can plug them into your PC. You can plug them into some smart televisions. They're, they're absolutely everywhere. And you can also use them with single board computers like the Raspberry Pi and also with microcontrollers like the Raspberry Pi Pico, the Arduino, and other microcontrollers. And in this video, I want to show you how you can use your micro SD card or an SD card with a Raspberry Pi Pico, and how you can read and write files to it from MicroPython. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, to access the SD card, we're going to use SPI, that's a serial peripheral interface. An SPI is a communication interface used for short distance communication, often to do with microcontrollers and embedded systems. It was developed by Motorola in the mid 1980s and it really is the de facto standard for how you do communication. There's also I squared C and that's also very, very popular. Typical applications include uh, SD cards and liquid crystal displays. And I do have some videos here on this channel about how you can get certain types of displays, particularly the one from Nokia working with your Raspberry Pi Pico and it uses SPI. And here is a SD card. And as you can see, there are all these pins and some of them are actually dedicated dedicated to using SPI. So this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one are all SPI or can be configured to be SPI pins in the SD card. Now SD cards also support other methods so you can get the data out even quicker, but by default, every SD card has to support SPI, which means you can then use it with a microcontroller over a very simple interface. In fact, it's so simple to use that if you wanted to, you could actually just solder wires directly onto those pins. You don't need any kind of adapter, you kind of convert it directly onto those pins and then connect that up to a microcontroller. And if this is one of those SD to micro SD card converters, this is actually what you're using. You just stick a micro SD card in there and there's the web address at the bottom for where I got this picture. The tutorial by that fellow, Alex Lubok. I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, and you could go and read that page if you want to, or you carry on watching this video. So let's see what else we can see. So what I'm using, rather than soldering directly onto a uh, SD card, I'm using an SD card adapter, which you can buy at just about any shop that gets, sells you Arduino stuff or Raspberry Pi Pico stuff. You're gonna find these kind of adapters. And if you look here, these are pins that are all the SPI pins, six of them in total, two of them are power, and four of them are to do with the SPI interface. And we're gonna dig right into that, of course, in a minute when we wire it all up. Now, one thing worth noting, SD cards work at 3.3 volts. If you do connect directly, for example, using that picture that Alex had done in his setup, then you're gonna have to work at 3.3 volts. But many microcontroller boards, like the Arduino, are five volts. Now the Pico is 3.3 volts, though you can get access to five volts as well, which I will show you. So don't connect the SD card to the wrong level of voltage because it will damage it. And to confuse things more, the SD card adapters, uh, some of them work at five volts because they kind of got the Arduino in mind and then they do, they've got step down logic to, to make the voltage 3.3 when it talks to the SD card. The adapter I'm using, the one I've just showed you there, actually runs at five volts and it does the conversion uh, internally. Okay, so this is what we're gonna have to build. What we have here is a Raspberry Pi Pico on a breadboard. Here is that adapter. And there are some wires just going from different pins on the Pico to the adapter, which we're gonna go through uh, in detail now, of course. They look at it from a different side there, you can see there's the SD, micro SD card in there, and then the pins which you connect up on the breadboard, obviously black and red there are the power, and we'll talk about the other ones uh, in a moment, and here you can see them as they are labeled on the back, and we need to make sure they connect to the right pins on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So here is the pin out of a Raspberry Pi Pico. Now, uh, here you've got five volts. These two here are five volts. That's the 3.3 volt one. These two are five volts. That's ground. Lots of other ground pins. Now, the important thing to note is that over here, you've got SP1, SPI0, sorry. SPI0, there's an SPI1 as well. So there are two hardware SPI interfaces that the uh, Raspberry Pi can talk SPI in hardware. And actually, if you look here, clock and CS, those match up with some of the pins we were just talking about. So what we wanna do is wire up one of the hardware SPI interfaces to the micro SD card and then use it. And so now we're gonna try and do that kind of in diagrammatically form. Obviously, we're making this. This is what we're actually making, but this is how you do it as a diagram. So the first thing we wanna connect up is the power. So five volts coming from this 
top pin here all the way down to VCC. That's the power there and ground to ground. So that should be fairly simple power on those two pins. And now you've got four other pins that we need to connect up. Now, the first pin is quite simple. If you look here, SPI0CS. Well, there we've got a CS pin. So we want to connect that uh, to that. So CS stands for chip select. So that's part of one of the circuits that enables uh, the interface. Now, the next one you're going to need is a clock. So the clock here comes from this little SPI0 clock. SCK, SCK, it's actually the clock signal. SPI clock, maybe. Okay, so you want to connect up pin four here round to the clock signal. So now we've done two of them, clock and uh, and uh, the chip select, pretty simple so far. Now, the next bit can get confusing if you're not really a hardware expert. I'm not a hardware expert, I'm more of a software guy. I do hardware when I need to, then I often get confused. Now the point about transmissions over any kind of interface is that one part needs to send and the other part needs to receive. Here I've shown you this picture of this, this guy listening here because when we have a conversation, even now when you're watching this video, I'm talking and you're listening. So one is sending and the other is receiving. And then when the other person talks back, they send uh, and I receive. So always the transmission part needs to go to the receive part of the other party and their transmission part needs to go to my receive part. So it's mouth to ear uh, and one kind of thing for wisdom for life is we have two ears and one mouth so maybe we should listen twice as much as we speak. So the TX and RX, that's transmission and uh, receive, on the Pico, the TX pin on the Pico needs to go to the RX pin on the SPI device, i.e. the card reader. So you transmit from the Pico and you receive on the SPI device. Now the RX pin on SPI devices have different names. That's because although this is kind of the de facto standard, there is no actual standard that defines the pins. So you start with MOSI, SI, DIN, DI, SDI. You might see this all on the same equipment. Now, this is the modern naming, main out, secondary in. There are references to master and so on here that, have, that are not considered uh, good naming nowadays. So we've got main out, secondary in, M-O-S-I. Then you've got secondary in, data in, uh, secondary data in. So as long as it's got kind of that I in there at the end, okay, that shows it, it's an input. And if you go back to our uh, diagram here, here we've got that M-O-S-I. So that's the input that needs to be connected to the transmit part on the Raspberry Pi Pico. And the same for the other. The RX pin on the Pico needs to go to the TX pin on the SDI, SPI device. And again, there are different names. You've got main in, secondary out, or secondary out, or data out, or da secondary data out, or DO just for data out. So if you see any of those with an O, basically on it, that is the, the output pin on the SPI, SPI device. So what does that mean? So if we look here, we go from the uh, secondary in here, needs to go all the way around to TX, SPI, TX. So that's what's going in there. And then when we do the next one, we can see that the, uh, the uh, secondary out goes through here to the RX this pin here, RX pin here. So we connect up the TX and the RX to the TX and the RX, but crossed over uh, on the other device. And that's it, that's all the wiring. So that's the logical wiring, six pins, that four of them for the SPI, two for power. And that's what it looks like kind of uh, illustratively. And this is what it kind of looks like uh, in real life, like this. Now, if you remember from my VGA Pico video, I showed you that the Raspberry Pi Foundation actually shown how you can build a demo board and they gave you all of the uh, schematics and everything. And these are their 3D renderings from these uh, demo boards that can connect VGA, which I did in that other video, but also an SD card. If you see down here, there's an SD card connected here and there's also some audio. And I got mine from Pi Maroni. You can get these boards, they're not very expensive. As basically they follow this setup that the Raspberry Pi Foundation did and they make them themselves. And here you can see there's an SD card connected to it there. Now in this setup, this is how they've wired up the SD card. So here's your SD card. Here are all those pins. Okay, some of them are power and some of them are data, but they're not the same pins as we were connected. If you notice, like GPO 22, we didn't even mention that. We were up there with, with up ones at number one and two and three and four way up there. 
So what actually it is, is how you, this is how it is. You've got your chip select again, you've got your input, you've got your clock, you've got your output, and it's those pins like that. That's what it is. So pin 20, GPIO 22 is the clock select, GPIO 18 is the input, GPIO 5 is the clock, and so on. Now the point is those are not hardware SPI pins. So you can't connect it to the hardware SPI part of the Raspberry Pi Pico. However, you can connect it to the software part. So there is a software implementation of SPI that the Raspberry Pi Pico can run and it works in MicroPython. And we'll look more at that when we look at the Python code, which is in fact what we're gonna do now. Okay, so here we are inside of Thony. That's the recommended IDE for doing MicroPython programming when speaking to a Raspberry Pi Pico. I've covered that in several other videos if you're not familiar with it. So the code here is really, really quite simple. The first thing you do is define this chip select pin. So you say machine.pin and then we're using pin number one exactly as we have done on our uh, wiring there and you wanna tell it that it is an output pin, simple enough. Then you initialize the SPI, which is part of, that's already done inside of the MicroPython, the hardware, knows how to deal with it all. And the important thing is these last three bits here, look at that, that's the pins we were just using, pins two, three, and four, for the clock, for the input, and for the output. And you just make sure those pins are, are correct. And that's it, then you're done. Then you need to just call a SD card initialization, passing in the SPI and the CS. Now this SD card thing is not part of the standard micro Python implementation, so you need to get that. So it's just a Python file, here it is. Here is where you can actually download it from. It's part, uh, it's available there as a driver. Okay, and there's the raw address. I'll leave these all in my uh, GitHub repository so you can get to them really easy. And basically, you just cut and paste that code into a file called sdcard.python. It knows all the stuff about chatting to SD cards over SPI and all that stuff. You can look into it if you want to find out more. And then once you've initialized the SD card over SPI, which of course, what we're doing, then we just need to say, let's mount a file system because the SD card, of course, is FAT32. As a side note, this won't work if you're using XFAT. So you need a 32 gigabyte or less SD card, or if you've got greater than 32 gigabytes, format it as uh, FAT32. So basically you just say, mount the SD card as FAT32. And once that's done, you can then just do normal file operations. So here it just says, open SD card test 01.txt in write mode, and then file.write, file.write, easy enough. And then once you've done that, then let's open it in a read mode, and let's read in all the data, and then print it out. And so if you run it, what we're expecting to happen is it will write to that file, then open that file, read from that file, and print on the in the console there what it can do. So let's run that and see what happens. And there you go, so we got printed out here, hello world, a hello SD world, this is a test, that's exactly what we write here, and it's actually been written to a file and then read back from the file. In fact, if you take out the SD card and then put it into your PC or into a laptop, you can actually find exactly the same file. So here it is, test01.txt, hello SD world, this is a test. So the files on there are normal files, you can read them from the Pico, and then you can read them on a PC or something like that. So this opens up a whole world of possibilities for uh, logging, for recording information, and also for having data. For example, if you're driving a small display with a graphical user interface, you can have graphics and icons and all that available on the SD card to, uh, to use and to display on your display. So lots and lots of possibilities, a music player, all kinds of things you could actually do on this uh, uh, gaming, of course, if you're using the VGA output, lots and lots of things. Just use your mind and see what you can come up with. Now, just for completeness, it's also worth mentioning that using the version with the VGA demo board, as I showed, in that case, you can't use the hardware SPI. So look at this, I'm using the pins here. Chip select is now pin 22, as I showed you in that wiring diagram. And then the clock and the input and the output are pins 5, 18, and 19, exactly as the, uh, the diagram, the wiring diagram shows, and rather than calling SPI, you call soft SPI, which means it's a software implementation, not based on the hardware pins, and that will just run purely in software, and that will still work and still does exactly the same thing. So you've got lots and lots of variations here.
And there it is, that's how you access an SD card from a Raspberry Pi Pico. Of course, you can also access it from C++. The ideas are basically the same. In fact, the ideas are the same for any microcontroller board. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. Let's shake up the ending here a bit. Let's do it in a different order. I've got a monthly newsletter. You can subscribe to it. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address. You won't get any spam, but you will get the email. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains. If you liked this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kinds of videos, then why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.